Boys and girls, good morning. It is Sunday, August 15th, 2021. And before we jump into this video, I just want to say really quickly, you know, it's always the most poor and downtrodden people on the planet who get hit with the worst of tragedies. And right now, uh, probably not speaking directly to these countries, but if you have family maybe from these countries, um, Haiti, one, from the earthquake, and two, Afghanistan, Kabul is about to be overrun by the Taliban after we uh, trained a 300,000 man army, supplied, equipped them and trained them for the last 20 years. They just laid down their guns and uh, the Taliban's about to take over for those, take back over the capital. Uh, so I feel awful for those people because that is an oppressive regime. I can tell you that firsthand. Um, all right, let's jump into what we're gonna be talking about today. The video I've been waiting to bring to you is based on this documentary called The Men Who Stole the World 2018. It's on YouTube. You can watch it. It's free. Things only got 130 views and I've viewed it like five times to put this piece together. So really it has 125 views. But I was watching it the other night. It came up in my queue and then I decided I was going to go to bed and I started thinking... I got back up and watched it again, and I just couldn't help but notice the correlations between 2008 and 2021, and why I feel so confident that AMC is the right play right now. I'm going to pull a few points from this video in case you don't have time to go watch the whole hour uh, to show you exactly what I'm talking about. So without further ado, cue the speeder. <laughs> You just said that on camera, this going viral. Ape Nation, thank you for helping me pass 200 subscribers. If you haven't subscribed yet, hopefully I can earn it today. So just one quick thing I want to say, especially to you newer apes, if you just subscribe to my channel, be extremely careful when it comes to who you're watching. I've seen a huge uptick in the last couple weeks of AMC YouTube hater channels, basically people who have been putting out videos about other stocks for longer periods of time and have not gotten as big of a following. This guy specifically is talking about Trey's trade, saying he's a stock, a shill, and Matt Kors is a shill and a slimy chameleon. Just be careful because if they are seeing videos like this, more than likely these guys haven't didn't buy AMC back when it was seventy eight dollars a share, like some of us back in February, and haven't been holding it for six seven months and talking about it. So there might be, you know, a little bit of jealousy in there. So just be just be aware of that. I don't want to see anybody get hurt after we've come this far. Okay, so the first part I want to jump into is uh, the 16-minute clip here. He talks about the bubble and how it was expanding back in 2004, 2005, 2006, 2007, and how greed was really running these derivatives for the uh, housing loans that they were giving out. And he's going to talk about it right now. So I'm going to jump right into that clip. Don't let me talk anymore, though. Roll the film. But this was a devil's deal between politicians and Wall Street. The setting to a perfect storm. What happens in a boom is lenders take more and more risk. And borrowers take more and more risk. Because they both think things are safer than they appear to be. And one of the ways they persuade themselves to take more risk is through financial innovations. So if you wanted the absolute craziness, it would be the Ninja loan. So Ninja stands for no income, no job, and no assets. All right, I'm gonna pause it here. So what I picked up on was look at the correlation between what happened back in those years leading up to 2008 and what we're seeing going on right now. In a bubble, everyone's smart, everyone's a winner, and everyone is making risky bets. And I think that it's safe to say these hedge funds took a risky bet on shorting AMC and GME to the point where they were going to try to knock them out of the market and shut them down and keep all of that profit. They just didn't see us coming. And I think now... They are in the position, I mean, look what they are doing right out in the open. They're not even trying to hide it. They must be so desperate at this point that they just don't care. 
it's the only thing that makes sense because you have to realize like they're going to get fined majorly. I mean, the repercussions from what they're doing right now, as long as there's a crackdown. Now, if they just get a slap on the wrist like they did with the GameStop fiasco, then this is going to continue. And see, no one got punished back in 08. One guy went to jail, and he was a small fish. All the big guys, like the guy we're going to talk about next, are still managing hedge funds right now. The guys who lost billions, billions and billions of dollars that had to be propped up by the federal government when Bush and Clinton bailed them out, uh, Bush and Obama bailed them out back in 08. And because there was no punishment, because they didn't take it seriously, and why didn't they take it seriously? Because this was all going on and Congress knew about it. The government knew this was happening. Maybe not everyone in government, but the people in government who should have known, they knew. These derivatives were risky and trying to bundle up these terrible mortgages that they're called, these ninja mortgages, and triple A rate them? I mean, these were criminal acts. And these people skated with no charges, no jail time. And they actually walked with bonuses from the money that they collected from the federal government as a bailout. If I tell you Dick Food, what will be the first thing that crossed your mind? A person who was viewed as a lion on Wall Street. Uh, I believe that in the year 2008, the very year of the bankruptcy, he was named by Forbes as one of the top 10 executives in the country. Squeeze some of those shorts. Squeeze them hard. <laughs> Not that I want to hurt them. Don't get that, please, because that's just not who I am. I am soft, I'm lovable, but what I really want to do is I want to reach in, rip out their heart, and eat it before they die. The man who lost Lumen Brothers, the man who presided over its decline and fall, the man who could have done something about it but chose not to, the man who re refused to see the writing on the wall, the man who uh, you know, kicked off in many ways uh, what became the Great Recession. I discovered many things that were at least unethical, if not illegal. And eventually, I decided to quit. I was earning a lot of money. but it was not enough for me to turn a blind eye to all that was happening around me. The tone coming from the top, Dick Fold, the guys around him were, go for it, push it, go beyond the limits. The key at Lehman was to evaluate the risk and the reward, and never mind the law that might be in between there. If, if the reward is high enough and the risk is low enough, we will do it and we will sort it out later. This was a and guys, are we not seeing the exact same mentality right now? Dick Fold is the 2008 version of the 2021 Ken Griffin. Doing anything at any cost to make a profit, no matter how reckless it is, just get it done, make the money, and we'll figure it out later. And in 2008, they didn't really have much standing up against them, did they? There was no huge buildup or lead up to their collapse. This one, we can see it coming. At least I can. I hope you guys are starting to understand that. Why I'm bringing this video to your attention. I just see so many similarities between what's going on right now and what happened back in 08. It's just changed from these junk mortgages that were AAA rated to now they are doing this with Naked shorts and the FTDs and trading in the dark pools. Doesn't matter if they're breaking the law. Just make the almighty dollar. Whatever it takes to turn a profit, like he said, we'll sort it out later. And the problem is there's not going to be a later because we continue to hold. 
So there won't be a later. That bill's going to come due. All right, the last clip I'm going to play is talking about human nature and how if you are being rewarded for something as a human and emotion is involved, you will continue to do that thing that you're being rewarded for. Under oath, I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth. He did it on television to the world, and uh, this stood up. Take him away! Take him away! I don't even think I could resist. If you gave me the opportunity to make $550 million and all I had to do was hurt six billion people, I would think about it. The temptation is there. People are simple. They do what they're rewarded to do. So if you're rewarded to take big risks with other people's money, that's what you're going to do. And just in case you're wondering whatever happened to Dick Fold, well, he's working right now back on Wall Street. He has a new investment firm, a new hedge fund. It's called Matrix Capital. And he is currently the CEO of the company. You can look it up. This is absolutely stunning. Wall Street has seen very, very few days like this. The inevitable happened. The house of cards came falling down. Lehman Brothers, a 158-year-old firm, filed for bankruptcy. Brought down by bad mortgage investments, Lehman, which has 25,000 employees, will be liquidated. Someone said, you know, corporations die of cancer, investment banks die of heart attacks. So that's the last part I'm going to leave you guys with. Um... I know I've spoken to a lot of you before and a lot of you have asked me what DD did I do um, that got me so confident in this play and I have directed you to the Reddit post by Autobit, House of Cards 1 and 2, that along with uh, watching Trey for the whole month of February break things down and Wrench Capital and a few others, Jeff Forbes, convinced me of how solid this play was and uh, I still feel that way right now. But he said the words House of Cards, and that's just been resonating with me. And it is. This is all built on a terrible foundation that just can't be sustained at the rate it is now. There's going to be something that's going to happen, some catalyst that's going to turn the tables. And people are going to say, too much risk. We got we to gotta settle all these scores. And the reason why I'm confident on AMC is because when that call comes, they are going to have to start closing their positions. And if it means they get liquidated like Lehman does, then so be it. They are the ones that engage in this risky behavior. They're the ones that wanted to short AMC and GME and pound them into the dust and take over the companies and keep all that profit. They made these choices. They had decisions. They got to live with them. If that means that we liquidate a few hedge funds, Citadel and Virtu and Susquehanna and a couple others, then so be it. They made their bed. They got to lay in it. So I just wanted to bring this to your attention, guys. I believe we have a major correction coming. I could be wrong. It's just speculation. And that's all we can really do right now as we wait for whatever it's going to be that's going to margin these guys to get them to close out these positions. And guys, it's Sunday night. Try to relax tonight. Get your mind off AMC. We got a big day tomorrow. Hopefully be nice and green for all of us. And I wish you guys luck. And I will be talking with you again tomorrow. This is Ape Nation. I'm the Massalorian. And I'm out.